With the rebellious badassery of anyone who brings change to an infrastructural or cultural edifice, Rorty went so far as to deconstruct his own discipline, stripping philosophy of its Whiggishness and releasing it from the burden of determining morality, truth, or knowledge, and reducing it to merely one of many ways of having a conversation. One of Rorty's main themes in his 1979 philosophy in the mirror of nature is that epistemology, that is, philosophy's preoccupation with checking religion, politics, and science on their claims to truth or knowledge, has become passé. According to Rorty, the mind cannot be considered an accurate mirror of nature, as was adequately argued by Descartes and others, who emphasized the epistemological gap between what's going on outside of our minds and what's going on within them. Rorty even takes materialism to task, my beloved neurophilosophy, saying that neuroscientific talk is just a different way of talking about the same stuff, and therefore of no more use in bridging this gap than traditional philosophical systems. It's as if the reality of something is divorced from any discussion of it. We can speak of gravity, for example, in Newtonian terms, poetic terms, or otherwise. We could even go so far as to deny its existence. Interlocutors from various disciplines could speak about gravity and end up in a fight about words. But if we throw an apple off a building and watch it plummet to the ground and explode, all sides of the argument would see that what happened to the apple happened to the apple, regardless of what language or lexicon they choose to discuss it. Reality is again divorced from language, reducing discussions of reality, knowledge, and truth to interpretations of language and text is referred to as hermeneutics. Rorty turns the thinker's attention to how commensurate language creates contextualized epistemology and situation-based shared systems of truth. By reducing philosophy to just one form of commensurate language, Rorty is said to have brought the end of philosophy, a concept sometimes called post-philosophy. Commensurate language is simply language that makes sense to two or more parties in a discussion. When a word is used in conversation, all parties in the conversation have a similar psychic concept associated with the word. If so, a knowledge or a truth is established, bound by the context, the parties involved, and the mutually agreed upon lexicon. Commensurate language can also be created through mutually understood language that connects two or more contextualized epistemologies. If this happens, the gap is bridged and a new shared epistemology is created. Rorty's approach devalues truth and knowledge, relegating seemingly profound existential concepts to nothing more than a lexicon that is peculiar to Western philosophy, due mainly to the path that the discipline has followed over time. By taking this hermeneutic turn, directing philosophy's attention to the meaning of language rather than meaning at large, Rorty pokes at philosophy's ego. Although, says Rorty, philosophy ought to continue its epistemological work, it can no longer be viewed as the almighty arbitrator of claims made by religion, politics, and science, as it once was. 